Hey everybody, Chris Petraki here at Aki Visual Art and I'm going to uh, do a little demo on Art Rage 5, the new Art Rage 5, and kind of talk you through some of the new tools, new interface, and all that good stuff. It's got updated new features, uh, including the custom brush tool, custom brush designer, warp layer effects, perspective, really cool stuff. It's got an improved user interface and you'll see right here that I'm using the lights out interface. So it's a lot like uh, Photoshop in the sense that you can uh, make everything kind of gray and dark so that staring at the screen doesn't just blind you. And um, it's a lot easier on the eyes. And it's such a lightweight program. It's it's quick and it's affordable. It's like $79. It's amazing. So this program is, is just really good with natural media in a way that Photoshop really isn't, um, in my opinion. The brushes, like for example, this is a kind of an oil painting, digital oil painting, and the brushes look like... Um, let me just quickly uh, bring this reference in here. The brushes look like real oil paint. They've got kind of an opacity, a thickness to them. Uh, and uh, that, that's like really cool. So I really like ArtRage for, for doing an oil painting in, digitally in the computer. And so kind of what I've done first, just quickly, is just tone the canvas with a kind of a neutral to warm middle gray. Uh, and then started with my line drawing, which was a kind of a burnt sienna, kind of a middle dark burnt sienna. I got the drawing established. And I think I did that on a, a new layer. And then I started putting in uh, the dark, medium dark shadow shapes, keeping it maybe, you know, 70 or 80% gray in value and not going all the way black because I'm saving my black accents and I don't want to put them everywhere. I want to spot them around the piece so that uh, your eye will move around the canvas with that kind of uh, variety of uh, value contrast. And so I'm just blocking in, um, again, the dark shadow shapes and then doing the half tones in the light side. So in the light side, I'm looking for color. So at the beginning, a crucial thing that I do is squint and compare and I just squint way down and I let the family of darks become apparent to me and the family of lights and I keep it real simple just two values like a bad Xerox black and white and I kind of force myself to make decisions what's a dark thing what's a light thing and then I kind of look at the shapes and say, what's a round thing? What's a square thing? What's a triangular shape? And I keep it really graphically simple. And then I'll kind of open up my eyes a little bit and I'll look for the half tones, the tones between the darks and the lights that I can step in between to make the transitions from the dark shapes to the light shapes. Um, And so in the light side, I'll open up my eyes. Once I've decided what's in the family of light, what's in the family of dark, open up my eyes and look for color. Okay. And in the dark side, I will just look for shape and value. So that's kind of how I'm treating the family of lights a little di bit different than the family of darks. In the light side, you'll see <clears throat> in the photo reference there, um, you know, roughly when you're doing a portrait, you can kind of separate out the areas of the head, um, by, by hue. And so generally speaking, 
in just daylight conditions. The forehead could be a little bit yellowish and the cheeks can be, the cheeks nose can be reddish or pinkish and then the jaw blue or greenish and then the throat could be purplish. So I'm kind of keeping that in mind and I'm putting that in even though I don't exactly see it, but I do see some sort of neutral grays in both the warm and cool hues. And they're very subtle, but like for example, under that lower lip, I'm putting some greenish tones because I do, I see a muted almost, it looks bluish, but it's just neutral and I can warm it up with a little bit of green. In the forehead, I've put more of a muted kind of grayed down ochre, yellow ochre. And then I'll keep more of the, the pure hues. They're not pure, but they're, they're light, but they're a little more pure than the rest in the cheeks, nose, and lips. Because that's where I want you to look. So I'll put the color contrast and the value contrast there near the eyes, nose, lips, and let's say the cheek. So you can see on the left, I've got all my tool palettes there and I kind of like to put everything on the right side because did I say left? Anyway, it's on the right side. Um, that's how I work with natural medium in the studio if I set up. So I have my brushes and palettes and colors all on the right side. So I've got my color picker and <clears throat> my color block basically. I've got below that is the tool picker and that thing helps me to just quickly pick tools and um, on the fly. And below that they have presets and so you can see I'm just using a basic oil painting brush. And if you click on presets, there's an icon with the brush, you click on that and hold it, there's a drop down menu and if you go down to the bottom of that and click on that, another flyout menu comes up and you can click the kind of oil brush you want. So they have everything from, um, you know, the driest brush to like a gloppy, wet, thick oil brush to an uh, always or never dry, <laughs> never dry. It's uh, got pigment and paint forever kind of thing. And so I'll go through and um, use that to pick the different kind of, you know, loading the brush or different kinds of application that you could get with tra traditional media. And then I'll use under the presets, there's pressure, thinners and loading sliders in green. <clears throat> and I'll just <clears throat> go back and forth with thinner, adding thinner or adding medium. Um, and that would be like walnut oil or some kind of oil to to cut the medium and then loading so it's like i'll load the paintbrush with more or less oil paint so just going back and forth between thinners and loading i didn't use pressure much it's up around 77 percent and i didn't touch that but i will have um <clears throat> basically i'm thinking as a traditional oil painter painting fat over lean meaning um, lean is the thinned out um, sort of initial wash of the painting and so those are thin the shadows are basically kept thin and then as I go into the light areas where light is revealing the object I'll thicken up the paint thus um, the phrase fat it's thicker and fatter so to speak um, with oil paint and so that thicker paint applied to the canvas um, just makes it look like it's real it's like the illusion of you know a face revealed by light it's it's amazing so it's that fat thick paint contrasted with the thinner paint um, makes things look 3d makes them look compelling and you know virtually real so I'm kind of just going along here 
that's basically all that I used. I did use another tool, which was the palette knife tool. Great tool. And within the palette knife, you can just, uh, you have a few features like just add water. So if you use the palette knife with just add water, it'll soften up something, soften up the edges and blend the edges. You could do another one within the palette knife, which is just blend color. And so if you have a, an area where you need a really smooth transition, you can hit it with the palette knife on just blend colors and it'll blend for you or just add water and it'll really smooth things out like an airbrush. And you can also use it just to sort of scrape the paint over the canvas and um, create some interesting edges and edge effects and paint effects scumbling over the canvas that oil paint is so beautiful for. And so, um, so basically I really like the interface, this new interface. It's much more professional now and it's less, kind of less cluttered, although it's still a little clunky and cluttered. I'd like for my, all my palettes to be able to snap together and a little, in a little more organized way. And now I've got the uh, interesting brush icon. I don't know how, what button I pressed to get that brush. And I wanted to go back to the just brush, like the circular icon, and I didn't know how to do it. So I'm kind of stuck with that for now. So if anybody knows, you can put that in the comments. <clears throat> um, just now kind of doing an edge pass and doing my flourishes. Everything's pretty much done. And now I'm adjusting edges, hard and soft, pretty much just hard and soft edges. And it creates that, that movement because when you lose an edge and you find an edge, it's, it creates that motion. It creates that um, movement in the eye because it's, it is movement somehow. And then I'm spotting color around, uh, like in the face, I used warm and cool tiles of color in the light side of the face. And now around the painting, I'm taking some magentas or greens and little ac blue accents and just accenting areas around the painting. So your eye continually moves around. So it moves around because of value contrast. It moves around because of warm and cool color contrast. And it moves around because of edge clarity or hard and soft edges. And this is kind of a Zhao Min Wu kind of painting style. I love that guy. And that completes the painting. So I really hope you enjoyed this and that it helps you kind of give you a little intro to Art Rage and why I love this program so much. And also, I hope you enjoyed the painting and you can see what you can do with Art Rage. And it's, it's powerful and it's really fun to play with. So I thank you so much for uh, checking, me, checking this out. Just remember to like and subscribe. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.